Hey, good day, it's Prezzo. Welcome back. Now, this is part two of building a DIY four facet drill grinding machine. And in the previous episode, I outlined the general operation of the machine and we started some of the parts. So, I'm going to continue on with that today. But uh, I've got a new sticker to go up in the door, so I'm going to do that first and then we're going to talk about this shirt. Now, today's sticker comes from Cleveland, Ohio, a gentleman named Greg. And his channel is called My Little Mule. I can't say my little mule, <laughs> so I'm just going to call it my little mule. And I think he's referring to his beautiful Jeep here. And uh, you see from the sticker there, he's got his own YouTube channel and you can find him on Instagram. There's a close up of Greg's sticker there. Now, Greg's got a wonderful workshop. He's got a Bridgeport milling machine, a beautiful little South Bend lathe, and a Kearney and Trekker milling machine. Now, he's done some wonderful restorations on those machines. Got a ton of videos there, there's certainly something there for you to watch. So check him out, I'll put a link in the description below and also above there on the screen now. So yeah, uh, stop by, uh, give him a like and a thumbs up, uh, I'm sure you'd appreciate it. Okay, so what's the story with this shirt? Well, this was sent to me by one of my viewers. Now his name is Guy Lopez and he has his own YouTube channel called Talk Tool. I'll put a link up above there now. Now, Guy has been one of my subscribers for a long time now, and he got in touch with me last year and sent me this rather mysterious message and said, what size t-shirt do you take? Now, he didn't let on what it was all about, but I told him, and he said he was going to send me a package through the mail. Now, it was around about that time of the Bar Z bash. Turns out the guy went to that, and he met up with Joe Pysinski. Now, this is uh, Joe's company, Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas and I've been a viewer of his channel for quite a long time now and I've learned a lot by watching his videos. Now Guy not only sent me this t-shirt but he also sent me this beautiful engraved plaque. Now this is made by Joe Pysinski and initially I thought this was just a, um, a bit of an exercise in rotary table work but it turns out it's not that. It's, uh, it's actually a, a challenge that Joe Pysinski took to the Bar Z Bash. And the idea was that uh, this was set up on a milling machine table and there was a probe put into this track here and the idea was to try and move the plaque and around or the plate without having the probe touch the sides of that track there. So it's a bit of an exercise in speed and dexterity. So you had to be able to manipulate the X and Y feed handles on the milling machine quickly and accurately <laughs> so you could drive it through that track there. Now, I got all enthusiastic and uh, made a bit of a challenge to another Australian YouTuber who also got one of these. Now, his name is Aaron Powter, and uh, he lives down in Melbourne. So after a few drinks one night, I made a bit of a challenge to Aaron, and I said, uh, you know what, we should have a bit of a challenge to see if you can get through this the quickest. And I put it on the milling machine and failed miserably. <laughs> so, uh, challenge is off, Aaron. Uh, let's not do that. But uh, I love this, this is a beautifully made piece of kit and if I turn that on the back there you can sort of see that uh, it's been engraved and it's got Joe's name up there. So uh, this is one of those treasured possessions that I'm going to put upstairs in the study, it doesn't live down here and uh, yeah I can keep this forever. Now uh, let's get on to today's video, it's something I want to show you on the bench first though. In the last video that I did I showed a Bridgeport slotting head that I'd purchased and in that video I mentioned that it didn't come with the clamp or the fitting that bolts onto the back of the Bridgeport ram. Now in amongst my scrap I found these two cast iron angle plates, they're actually not angle plates, they were brackets from another machine. And I also had this big chunk of cast iron. Now this was originally a 10 kilo weightlifting weight. And this was turned into a press tool that I needed to make some sheet metal parts for a jet engine that I was building. However, it's almost exactly the right diameter. In fact, it's a bit bigger than the disc on the back of the slotting head. And with those two angle brackets in place there, I can get this to bolt onto the back of the Bridgeport ram, and I can machine a T-slot, a circular T-slot in this so that I can pivot the slotting head as well. So that's gonna come up in, in a future video. I'll show all of that uh, machining to get that operational. But there's something else that I need to get the slotting head working properly. So here's the entire slotting head and uh, I've not been able to run this under power yet but I've been able to move everything over by hand. Everything works. The stroke control can be adjusted and it's working. And it's got step pullers at the top there for the, the various speeds. 
Now this motor is three phase and it's got its own on off switch in that box there and obviously the power lead would come out the back of that box there and I can either plug this directly into the rotary phase converter but I would rather control this from the contactor in the electrical enclosure on the bridge port mill but to do that I need a connector. So this is the socket that's on the top of the electrical enclosure for the bridge port and this is the, the matching plug that goes with it. Now this is connected directly to the motor and it's got an earth pin and then it's got three pins for the three phases. And this is made by a company called LPA. Now the number on this is X4S slash P0. And I've tried and failed to buy one of these. I looked on eBay, I looked on the US eBay site and there are some of these available but not with uh, four pins. And uh, I got in touch with the company LPA and they said that this is basically an obsolete part. But if anybody has one of these, if you've got it lying around and you think it would fit, uh, please get in touch. I'll put my email address on the screen there now and I'm happy to pay for it, happy to pay for shipping. But having this on the end of the slotting attachment would mean that all I need to do is to rotate the ram round, disconnect the motor for the Bridgeport milling head and connect up the slotting head using that port there. So, like I said, if you've got one or if you know where I can get one and the price is right, happy to pay for it, not a problem. Okay, so that's my request over and done with. Let's get on with the uh, drill sharpener. This is the collet block that I made in the last episode of this build and I've got this sitting in the milling machine now because what we need to do is to drill and tap for a locking screw just here. So when we're using the drill grinder, what we need to do is to lock the hold collet chuck in position and then set our indexing ring at the back here. We also need to set the position of the drill point against the grinding wheel. Now, as you rotate the drill bit 180 degrees, you also need to incrementally feed the drill bit into the grinding wheel. So this locking screw is used uh, during the grinding process and then we loosen that and then there will be a feed screw in this indexing ring somewhere. There it is there. So there'll be a feed screw in there and that allows you to incrementally push the drill chuck forward as we grind the drill. So this is the setup that I'm using here. So I've got a big parallel against the moving jaw of the bias and that's because that bigger V in the V block was causing it a tip. Got the collet block itself sitting in the V, the smaller one, and a piece of copper against the fixed jaw there. Now I've got to be a bit careful here. If I over tighten the vise, I can squash that collet block. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I can slide that in there. Everything's loose at the moment and that slides. If I tighten the vise, it still slides, tighten a bit more and it actually locks. So it is actually putting some sideways pressure on that and it's very thin. So I've got to be careful I don't over tighten it. And I can use the, um, the, the actual spindle of the collet chuck itself to locate the center and get the axis right. Anyway, I'll show you what I mean. Because I know the diameter of this collet chuck here is 25, I only need to edge fine against one side and then I can move across exactly half of 25 and half of this uh, edge finder here, which is 10. And then the drill hole is 90.05 or three quarters of an inch from the end face of the collet block. Okay, that's put me over the center of the collet chuck and I just need to offset now by three quarters of an inch uh, to get the center of the drilled hole. Okay, well that should be it there. Now I know it looks a bit offset, but don't forget that this collet block is rectangular, not square. So we're not going to be right on the very sharp edge at the top there, or at least not centered on that. So I'm just going to plunge down with a 12mm carbide end mill now, make a flat and then we'll drill and tap.
All right, that should be it there. Now, I'm not going to go too deep because I need some material left to put the thread in. That should be enough. I put my vice stop in position here because I need to remove this collar chuck because I'm going to drill and tap and drill all the way through. And remember, this is sort of a bit tight in here now. When I slacken the vice off, there's a chance that this collar block could move. So this is just going to allow me to put the collet block back in place. Now I want a spot drill there first and what I would normally do is use this great big 16mm keyless chuck. But to get this into the spindle it means that you've got to crank the table down a fair way, put that in and then crank it back up again. And if you've got a big drill bit and so on it's just, it's just a pain in the bum. So what I did this morning was I made myself a little mini chuck. So this is uh, a little keyless chuck from a Metabo two-speed drill and I made a hardened steel arbor to go in that and that's 16 millimeter ground rod. And with that in a 16 millimeter collet, it's much easier to fit. So if you're only dealing with small drill bits, this is a lot easier. So in practice, you just put the collet in there. I don't need to move the job at all. And that's now ready to go. All right, I uh, should have done the countersink first, but there you go, it's done. <laughs> That's the collet block pretty much finished now. I do need to make a little brass screw to go in that threaded hole. And you see how the threaded hole looks offset, but it's actually centered exactly over the axis of the collet chuck. So we're gonna put this aside now. I'm gonna move on and do the indexing ring on this end. This indexing ring is gonna be machined from this stock here. So this is uh, 6011 aluminium and there's not much uh, in this particular part. The only really critical part is this track which runs around one side of that index ring and that will have to be done on the rotary table. So I'm just going to machine this to the correct outer diameter drill and ream to fit the 25 millimeter shank on our collet chuck and then I'm going to take the entire chuck off the lathe and mount that on the rotary table to machine in that 180 degree track and that way I can ensure that it's, uh, it's accurate uh, in reference to the ball.
Well, again, that surface finish in there is not brilliant, it's a bit scratchy, uh, but the collar chuck does fit and there will be a locking screw in here. And uh, what we need to do now is take the whole chuck off the lathe, go over to the rotary table and we're going to mill in that track, which is essentially a can. Uh, then we can do all the rest of the drilling and tapping and so on and I'll part off to finish. So this is the three jaw chuck, uh, it came off the back plate which is still mounted on the lathe and I fitted the three jaw chuck to this aluminium casting and I've aligned the spindle of the milling machine with the center of the rotary table and I've got the part aligned with the spindle as well. So if I run the dial indicator around there I've got you know, roughly five microns all the way around there so that's good enough. Now I've set the absolute on the DRO to zero in this position. And what I want to do is, while I've got the rotary table here, I want to make these two parts. So this is the feed lever, that's the connecting rod. These need to have a whole bunch of holes drilled and also the ends need to be radiused. So what I can do is go over the device and use the incremental to do the hole drilling and then come back and pick up the center of the rotary table with the absolute on the DRO. So I'm going to set up now for milling that uh, section of the, the track and it's for a 3mm dowel pin. That's the full target depth there, 7.65 millimeters, but I've got a lot further to go in terms of the radius. But that's the full 180 degrees, and I just want to do a quick run through there, take a fairly light cut, just to get used to the workflow. And uh, what I'll need to do now is just repeat that process, but uh, I'm gonna keep going in on the radius uh, until we get to our target radius. But a bit nervous about using small diameter carbide end mills. I've had a few disasters in the past, so I just want to do a fairly light cut to start with. Well, I think you got the idea. I'll bring you back when I'm on the last pass, but I've just noticed that there's some chips getting welded onto that surface there. Uh, I didn't keep the coolant up to that as I was reaching the end. I was too busy watching the rotary table to make sure I stopped at 180 degrees. But when I get to the last pass, I'll need to add the coolant more regularly.
I just did a return pass there uh, at full depth. I'd left about five hundredths of a millimetre on the floor of that pocket just to clean up. And in theory now, our collet chuck should fit in there, gauge pin should uh, go around that track there and should stop exactly 180 degrees apart. Okay, I'll see if it fits. Alright, that's good. Now, uh, before I tape this out of the milling machine, I need to drill a single hole through this face here, and that's for a feed screw. And there'll be another hole through the outside circumference there, that's just for a, uh, a knob, so you can turn that easily by hand. I'll do that off camera, and then we'll part this off in the lathe. Oh, that's sort of cleaned up and uh, that fits on the back of the collet chuck so it's going to work like that and I've just realized that the screw thread that has to go through the outside circumference of this part here also locks that index ring onto the collet chuck so that'll have to be a through thread and the screw that we fit in there not only serves as a handle for the index ring but it also locks that onto that uh, shank there. Well, that's the locking screw and also the lever that allows you to index the collet chuck around 180 degrees. It's going to need some clean up on that end, but I'll do both those brass locking screws at the same time. And more interesting is uh, how are we going to drill the hole for this screw in the index ring? Because it's got to be offset at some weird angles, but I have a solution. So you can see I've cleaned up the end of that brass screw there, just did that in a collet in the metal lathe and I just face that off. 
but what I need to do now is to drill and tap a hole through the circumference of this index ring and it's a bit of a weird setup it's uh, got to be offset 45 degrees from this existing hole that's already in the aluminium part here and it also has to be indexed uh, from the centers of these two circular features on the end of that track there and I thought about how I was going to do this I thought about sort of using angle blocks and scribing center lines and all sorts of nonsense and in the end I decided to cheat <laughs> so here's my solution so this took about five minutes to model that in my CAD package it took about 20 minutes to print that but I could do other stuff while it was printing and the way this will work is we can place that like so and I'll use the brass screw I've already made to hold that together and then we just mount the whole thing in the milling machine vise. So what I'll do now is I'll center find on the circumference and off the back face and then I'll drill and tap for M4. There's the locking screw in place. I think I'll just clean up the inside there, put it all together, and we'll go over the bench. And I think that's the end of today's episode. Well, there's complete assembly to this point, and these two brass screws are really important in the grinding operation for drill bits. So when you set up a drill bit for the very first time, you put it in the collet chuck, tighten the chuck, and then you have to align the lips of the drill with the fixture. So later on, I'll be making that fixture and you can visually set up one of those lips with a scribed line horizontal through the center line of that fixture. And when you've got that, you lock this brass screw here, and then you can run the index ring around against that pin there, and then lock that in place as well. So when you want to turn the drill bit over 180 degrees, you loosen this brass screw, and then you can rotate the whole collet chuck around through that 180 degree arc. Now on the back here, there's a feed screw. So this can be wound in or out to set the depth of cut. Uh, this is only temporary. Later on, I'll be making something with a, a long knurled handle and a spring. Uh, that's described in the notes uh, that John Moran has produced for this machine. So here's the trunnion. And don't forget that we've got three different holes here we can drop these pins into. So that one there is 135 degrees, but we can come around to 118 degrees if we want to. And one thing I didn't mention was that the position of the drill point relative to this center line is very, very critical. So if you can imagine that line passing through that axis, the drill point has to intersect that line exactly. Now there are notes on how to achieve that accuracy, but I won't go into that now. We'll look at that in a later episode. But then you can raise and lower the trunnion and get the grind that you need on the tip of the drill without any fuss or bother once you've done that initial setup. Okay, so I think we're going to finish up here now. Uh, I'm going to leave you some footage of the little Joey kangaroo that's been here with its mother over the last week or so. We got a really good look at it the other day. It uh, came out of the pouch, or stuck its head out of the pouch and had a bit of a munch on the grass. So I'll show you that. And then when we come back next time, we'll start work on this trunnion plate and try and get that done. Okay, so it's Preso signing out. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.